Welcome, ladies, to the Real Estate Investor Show, providing inspiration, strategies, and insight to empower women investors to live balanced and financially free lives. Now, here are your co-hosts, Liz and Andressa. So in today's episode, ladies, we have Melanie McCollin. She's the Chief Creative Officer with Viva May Hospitality, which is, which is her and her husband's company they've formed uh, a number of years ago. Her and her husband control close to $50 million in resorts and in, in that particular niche. And her story is phenomenal. Uh, we get into so many neat kind of specific examples on what you can do to take your business to a new level and thrive during lots of uncertainty. And in particular, one of the things we talk about is why resort investing is actually a great investment right now. And you know why it's a great investment? Because most people are turning away from it versus towards it. And how we, we talk about how you can then take that same principle and apply it in your own business with the, you know, your own opportunities. Absolutely. Melanie, by the way, she's a mom of 10 kids <laughs> and she's going to be sharing not just business strategies, but mindset strategies, right? No matter what niche you are in, your mindset will either hold you back or really like propel you to thrive. So don't miss this episode. We have a special event coming up as well that we're going to be sharing the link. So check it out now. Welcome back, ladies. This is Liz. And this is Andressa. Welcome back to the Real Estate Investor Show. Thank you so much for joining us this week. We have Melanie McCullen on our show this week. We are so excited. She's a two-time guest of our show. So Melanie, thanks for being back with us. So, so excited to have you here again. We, I just love being with you guys. You're so fun and your community is just awesome. Well, thank you. We're going to get into your um, amazing story here in a moment. And, and as, as we always do, right, Andressa? Mm -hmm. I want to thank all the women and men, because we know men listen to our show too, which is sure. awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. But we want to thank all, all of our listeners. Thank you for being here with us for another week. You have a lot of choices on what you could be consuming in terms of content these days. And we just appreciate you so much. Uh, we'd like to, you know, just thank you and just tell you how important it is for us to give you the most value. Right, Andressa? You in, bet. In, in our mission and what we're up to with supporting women living a financially free and balanced life. So as we always like to do, right, Andressa, we like to kind of jump into things and share a, a quick tip or a strategy or just quite honestly a funny story from our lives <laughs> just to kind of get connected to all of you. So we I'm just scared of funny stories lately. <laughs> I know. I have, I have too many of them, but... You know, I, I, we also like to, we like to give a lot of real estate investing tips, but this, this yeah. podcast and, and our community and quite honestly, our movement's more than just real estate investing, right? It, you know, this is, we're serving women and we're on, we're on a journey as all you know, we're on a journey and it's not about just achieving success. It's about yeah. doing it in a way that is on your own terms, right? So all of our tips also align with that, with that theme and that mission. So I have this week mm. and I'm, I've been listening to this this book, How to Not Lose Your Shit with Your Kids, How to Stop Losing Your Shit with Your Kids, <laughs> probably for six months. And I, you know, for me, I'll be like, oh, Jessa, what are you listening to or reading? And she's like, oh, yesterday I was listening to this. I'm done with that. Now I'm on to this. You know, like she she consumes content like in a crazy fast way. You do, Jessa. Like, yeah, you can probably like finish five books on Audible in like a week. That, yeah. I'm like seriously on the same book and it usually takes me like good six months to get through something. But anyway, I'm still listening to this. And I was listening to it this morning. I need a little, like, you know, I just need a little boost in that area of my life as a parent, as a mom. And she said something really powerful. And I wanted to share with all of you listening, because I think you could apply it to not just parenting, but to life. And she says, when you feel like yourself going into like a state of like anger or frustration or just you're not being your best self, right? When we all can connect with that. She said, stop and notice what's going on. And I'm like, what a great suggestion, you know? And I'm like, what a simple suggestion. <laughs> like notice, like, hello, don't you have something else for me? Like other, another like powerful thing to tell me. But I'm like, that's really important, right? To stop and notice what is going on. Are you frustrated about something else? Like, it's just, we don't always know. I don't, if I should speak personally, I don't always know why I might be frustrated. So just notice like how you're breathing, what are your thoughts? What are you feeling? And then she said, pause. And she said, you need to then pause. I'm like, I love that. She's like, don't stop, stop feels heavy. Don't stop anything, just pause what you're doing and redirect yourself. I'm like, oh, that's really good stuff. I like that. 
And then she said, the next thing is to, okay, I wrote this down. Obviously I'm looking down, but um, it, was, it was important to me or helpful to me. She said, do literally anything else. So if you feel yourself like getting really angry, really frustrated, really, again, not being your best self, she was talking about parenting and kind of like, you know, yelling at your kids, um, notice, pause, and then just do something, anything else than what you were obviously doing. So just shift your, you know, in that moment shift, you know, like, I don't know, go, she goes, I run around my house two times. I have teenagers. She's like, I literally go outside and I run around my house twice. And when I come back, I am in a different state. For that the, moment. the neighbors, I keep imagining the neighbors. Okay, something's going on. She's I'm running like, around that is a the fantastic house. The kids idea. are doing something. <laughs> I love that idea. So I'm going to steal it. But anyway, so so ladies listening, when you feel yourself not being your best self, right? That that whether it's an anger piece or it's a frustration piece or just you just need a shift, a focus, which we all do. I love the notice, like your breath, your thoughts, your feelings. Pause. Don't feel like you have to stop anything. Just pause and do literally anything else to change your state. So I just want to share that. (laughs) Well, I love that because I think, you know, when we recorded with Melanie was episode number 76. You guys can check it out. At that time, Melanie was a mom of nine. And we know that Melanie is now a mom of 10. (laughs) So I think this is so appropriate because every time that we go to Reno, uh, which is a beautiful resort that we're going to talk more about it. Um, I see Melanie's kids there. And Melanie, I don't know what you and Josh did with those kids, but they are so, they're aware. They're like aware kids. They're helpful. They're always looking to, to help and assist. And I was like, I, are they having like some course that they're going to do for parenting? Because I'm in. I'm in. So I don't want to get into that right now with you, Melody. But I just want to share with you guys, not you and Josh have done a beautiful, tremendous job with all your kids. And I've met several of them and I, I'm like impressed every time uh, that I, that I see them. It's just- well, what you don't see is we we run miles and miles around our house. And that's- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You got that down, right? Oh, We're great. in great shape. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I could just sit and talk about the Liz, your book forever. I was totally enraptured. Yes. I'm going to do that today. <laughs> I feel like I need those moments of quietness, but without further ado, um, Melanie, as we like to kind of kick, kick things off with all of our guests, and uh, we, we like to say what propelled you, what inspired you to get involved in investing? And I know, you know, you got involved in investing in a very um, grand, you know, uh, resort investing, if you will, but what propelled you, you and Josh, um, to get involved in this, in this particular niche and, and, and obviously in, in real estate investing? So what, what inspired you? So um, my husband was uh, had great success in doing three different resorts, um, and I would learned right alongside him. At that point, I had lots of little babies at home, and and um, that's where I was I was happy and where I needed to be. And um, but I was you know over we, we talk and communicate all the time, and I'm just was very very involved in um, what he was doing in terms of first of all it was just the physical construction, then it led to which that was the main, his main objective was to make these places beautiful. Um, and then he just fell into hospitality and there I, my heart was on fire right alongside of his. And I could see him. I mean, we were always listening to things about building the culture, building a culture of hospitality and, um, and what power we saw the powerful impacts of, of what that was and what that, what happened for him and his business. So it grew into three more resorts. Um, at the same time, um, He started learning about uh, syndication. We started learning together. Um, We went down to a couple seminars and courses, and we got really, really captivated by the idea that a common person can invest in a resort. Now, his three previous resorts were all like one guy with his with his money, big a big uh, fat cat. Josh likes to say so. So this was a completely novel idea. Like he knew how now how to run resorts and to do a great job um, in terms of culture and revenue. Um, But how does he make this accessible? How do we make this accessible to um, a common investor who wants to be part of something like this? Because the upside is amazing. What, what, how you can turn resorts over um, and just increase NOI like 
like unbelievably, really, it's unbelievable. So um, this has got to be something that can be shared and, and that everybody could be a part of. So we dove in, we found uh, Renault Winery, which is in Egg Harbor, New Jersey. And uh, to be honest with you, when we first walked through it, I just said, um, okay, if anybody can do it, it's you. Good luck. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> as 120,000 square feet of spaces that were by this point it had been bank owned for three years. And I just said, it, I'm not afraid of a fixer upper, but this is a wow. This is a wow <laughs> fixer upper. So, um, but, on, but he looked at me and he said, no, 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 let's do this together. I, I need you. I, we got to do oh. this together. So, so I went home, slept on it. The next morning I woke up and all of a sudden all the juices were flowing and I could see what this place could be. And I just all, I couldn't stop, you know, my Pinterest board exploded and I just went crazy with the, with notes and he and I, then we dove deeper and deeper into syndication and, you know, all the, all the other steps to pull this together to say, can we do this? Can we, can we pull this off? And, um, and since then in two and a half years, it has been transformative for so many people. Now we have 120 families that have invested in Renault and future properties that we are, um, that we own and are currently buying. Um, and then what has happened to Renault in terms of ex- you know, experience and guest experience has just, it's been extraordinary. It's been an extraordinary ride. So, um, so that's my passion. And, and I love to, to constantly put myself in the guest experience and say, what, what can make this an incredible experience for all? Well, well, when, when you guys started construction, I went there, we went there for, for, for a tour for the first time. And we were like super excited. And then talking to Josh and he was like, we were all excited about it. About the time frame and the vision. And in my head, I was like, Josh, how are you <laughs> gonna pull this off? What do you mean? You're gonna put this huge wine barrel, the design, the vision, I could see it. He's like, yeah, it's gonna be all here in the middle and we're gonna have this this like bar um, uh, countertop throughout and we're gonna have this outside. And I was like, okay, okay but I see like, in two years, three years down the road, that's going to be that, you know? (laughs) Right, right. And every time that I go there, we've been there multiple times. Every time that I go there, I was like, I have no clue how, how you guys pull that vision and really execute it in a, it's, it's every time that we looked at it, there is care. There is, Mm -hmm. uh, as you mentioned, we, you guys dive deep and put a lot of concept behind it more than, you know, it's like, oh, they really thought about that, right? I can see it. I can feel the transformation. And then when we look at it, it was like, oh, this is like humongous, the, the, what's, what's happening here. So my question to you is for folks that are like, okay, this is for big guys, right? This is for people that have experience on it and or have done it before so you mentioned that josh had experience before Mm -hmm. Uh, for folks that don't have experience what are the not red flags but what they should consider before investing in such a a big fixer upper so in terms of resorts that's that's a bit of a monster so you, there are the most important thing is to get the right people in the right places if you're doing a big resort now i realize most of your listeners are probably not all running towards resorts especially now because it's covid which i, I know we're going to get into that but um in any in any big job the first thing we did was we need a chef And we say, you would say, why? That's a strange thing. You're not going to be making food immediately. Are you? I said, no, but the chef is, is responsible for all the food and beverage and all the weddings. And I didn't get into this before, but the main factor that, that we felt solid on, because you can, when we are, when you're looking at now, the winery also owns a golf course. And when you're looking at all the facts and figures at the time that we were looking at this wineries typically lose money. Golf courses typically lose money. Right. Hotels are only 50 rooms. So it's like, so it's kind of like, 
no wonder this thing had been sitting around for three years. Right. And no wonder why, because it's 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 it, it has all red flags all over the place. But we said with one number and then is uh, weddings. We said this place was getting bank owned. No, no marketing whatsoever. 700 wedding leads, almost 800 wedding leads a year because we realized, ha ha. People want to be here. This is where weddings are trending. They want a three-day wedding event. This is where they want to go. So we said, if we just take weddings and we build out a performer for five years and we just capitalize on those leads, and by the fifth year, we're getting 135 weddings booked, does this all work? Because we need, obviously, meat on the bone to sink into that everybody can feel comfortable with. And we said, yes, we will succeed just on weddings. So what's the first thing you get a a, a smart chef in there? You get a smart chef that can say, I know weddings and I know how to make this work. And so now that chef is talking, speaking to investors. We already have there somebody on team. We got an HR person immediately on the team. We had our second in command guy who is local to the area and got us tons of leads, tons of smart people, um, food and beverage, hotel that he um, knew from the area that he had been in the industry for a long time. Get the people right to get the five core people on the team. And now anything's possible. Um, and so we built it out just according to weddings. And we knew all the other things were going to work out. We knew we can, we're going to bring back the winery and we're going to make incredible wine. We knew that we could improve the golf course. We knew all those things were possible, but those aren't things that people can feel comfortable with on paper. So, and then the cool thing was, we said in year five, we get to 135 weddings. We got to 600 weddings in year two. And mm-hmm. because we went crazy, like you explained before, yeah, we, we went crazy. And we said, first thing that we need to renovate, uh, all of it needs renovation, whole thing. First thing, ballrooms, because that's, uh, that was our plan. Do the weddings. Let's do the ballrooms. So those we got done first. And now, and uh, we said our, our sales team, we, you know, we have this incredible group of uh, five uh, sales ladies in who, we say they're the best saleswomen in the world because they were selling sticks and bricks like at, during construction. And like, we promise you the room's going to look like this. Yes. And they were constantly <laughs> giving them pictures and updates and to keep the brides happy and keep them calm. And, um, and honestly, if I showed you the picture, our, our computer rendering into today, it looks almost identical. And so we're, you know, we're real proud of that. And, um, but that, I mean, it, that takes, that takes a team. Yeah, no, I absolutely love what you're saying. And I think, I think the takeaway to ladies listening you know, you may not be renovating a hundred thousand square foot resort, right? I mean, I'm sure not all our listeners are doing that. It'd be awesome if, if, if some of you were like, good for you. Yeah. Because that's a hard, I mean, obviously you don't get into bigger things than you, you can, you think you can handle, but here's the takeaway. It's such an applicable piece that you're saying that anyone can take. So, mm-hmm. so often women will, will come to us, Molly, and say, Hey, I've got this rental property. And then you talk about the numbers and what works and what doesn't. And they say, Oh, well, if I convert the garage in the back, and we do this and we do that, it'll all work. Like, so in other words, the core, right? Mm -hmm. The the rental property itself, Mm -hmm. the one, the two bedroom isn't going to sustain the, the, you know, the the numbers, but all these other things that may or may not happen, (laughs) depending on the, the, then then it's like, so I, I guess the point is in real estate, you have to see where the possibilities are. You're converting something to a triplex. Well, then that's your, that's your plan from the beginning. Mm -hmm. But if your plan from the beginning is to renovate a rental property, and then you have all these other additional kind of income streams that Mm -hmm. could or couldn't happen, you got to go to your core. And I think that is a very important lesson for all of us to take. And you went to your core. Your Mm -hmm. core was with wedding with weddings. Yeah. Bottom line. Mm -hmm. And that was what you went all in on. And that's what you focused on, right? Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. there's a lot of there's a lot of pieces there that we you can take. And and then COVID happened. Well, let's talk about that, right? Uh-huh, yes. So then, then, the, then the, 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 you know, this, this, this experience that none of us have ever been through happened. And, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, ladies listening, you don't need to be uh, an expert in resort investing to know that, that the hospitality industry has been incredibly uh, affected from, from COVID, right? People aren't traveling from the beginning. People are not even, you know, we're in traveling, we're in engaging in, indoors. It just, it was like lights off right? For, for quite some time. So, so mm-hmm. walk us through that because then we're going to fast forward and how your, your site there has actually thrived, not just sustained itself or kept your lights on. You've actually thrived. And Andres and I actually experienced that when we came down recently during the winter time in the Northeast, <laughs> where it was like, <laughs> what? what? It was absolutely amazing to see. And it was so inspiring to see as an investor. So 
COVID happened, you're in the middle of renovations. Tell us what, what that was like and how you moved through that. So immediately in terms of the weddings, and we were just talking about that in terms of weddings right away, we were doing um, live webinars, live webcasts. We were reaching out to all the brides. We were, you know, answering and fielding all those questions. And because these are all, you know, brides had put their contract money down and obviously, you know, we all knew what was going on there. So we're constant communication with them. And we said, Hey, listen, we're going to, we are opening up our calendar and you have first pick of all the future dates that are not Phil, you know, like we're not going to keep selling that you guys have future dates and that you're, you're allowed to sell or that you, we want you to grab. So we've made sure that they all got moved to a comfortable space. So we didn't lose a single wedding. We made sure that everybody felt comfortable and we actually gained a whole bunch of weddings because there were, we have so many, we have five different wedding spaces on property. And so we have a lot of options and people were moving to Wednesdays and Thursdays, but people from other, um, you know, that had booked at other places that maybe just had one wedding hall and one ballroom, whatever they couldn't, they couldn't fit into a date that worked for them. So they, they, we were gaining oh, quite a few. We mm. actually kept selling weddings throughout the entire time. You know, they, it, it never slowed down. You would think people, but because that really showed us something that people believed, and this is where you get into like the human psychology, you have to kind of play that field during, during this whole coronavirus. Um, we, do people believed this would end and that they were going to get married. And mm-hmm. even if they adjusted now, we were actually, were starting to get two events in the same because they would have a smaller wedding when we were the, the governor sort of was allowing a smaller capacity indoor so they were having a family and friends event, and then now they're going to throw their bigger party with us, you know, a year later. It was, was that, so those are the kind of adjustments we made in weddings right away. Um, and like I said, we picked up, we picked up more weddings during coronavirus, during coronavirus than the year before in the same amount of time. So we were already, and, and because partially because our buildings were now done, which helped, um, but people had more time too, right? Never <laughs> people had more time to come down and see us because they're all working from home. So, and, um, and like I said, I think people believed in their heart that we were, they, they would have a future date. Um, and then as far as everything else, so we had to look at everything else. And this is where I think, um, pivoting and looking at what you said, like the core, like, what do we have? We looked at our property as a whole, and now we had different a whole different set of ideas of how our property was going to work in terms of the tasting room and outdoor spaces. We're going to be more of like a picnic area. We're going to have an inside market. It all felt very European, like come in and get your tasting. You're in, then you go over to the next adjacent room, which is like a really cool French market. And you get your, you get your sandwiches, your baguettes, and you go out and you have these picnic areas in the front. And we have quite, we have about five acres and a pond in the front of our, of the winery. And so we had this, this, all the, this great idea, coronavirus hits. And then the governor's sort of letting out like the, you know, what's going on in New Jersey. What are we allowed? We don't allow that. And he said, okay, well, you can do outdoor dining. You can do outdoor things. So immediately we all as a team got together and said, what do we have? We have outdoor space. We can make outdoor dining work. You know, this is like, we're finishing the restaurant across the street in the hotel. We stopped that and we said, we're building a whole restaurant outside. We're going to do the sit down thing outside. And so I, I just kept going back to two things. What do we already own that we can use and make work? And what do people need? And trusting my gut on that, you know, just trusting our guts. What do people need? People need somewhere to go where they feel safe. They can get out of their home, have an, a day, a lunch out, a dinner out with their family, with their friends. That is what people need right now. And I felt like it was like, like a ministry, like I need to provide this for people. And we have the space to do that. You saw all the people buying like tents in front of their restaurants during this whole, you know, time. And they had this tiny little part of a parking lot, but they were going to use this. And I said, look at, we have five acres. Let's use this. So it completely changed everything. We bought all this outdoor furniture. We got, you know, big investment. And so all through the summer and the fall, We created um, the champagne patio garden, the whole outdoor uh, experience. And we laugh because 
we have five kitchens on property. And the one kitchen that is from the beginning, we said, we're not going to do much to that one. We're not going to be using yeah. it. It became our main kitchen Oh God! <laughs> during yeah. coronavirus. We had like all the kitchens that were attached to ballrooms, right? These were all like big mega. We refit them out. They're perfect, <laughs> ready to go. Right. And then this tiny baby sliver kitchen, we're like, all right, whole restaurant, whole outside, five acres is coming out of here. And so that was another pivot. Like we had to, you know, if we had to, engineer our menu so that it could come out of there. We had to make sure that things were coming out in safe compliance and, you know, things were throwaway disposable, all the, all everything that we had to do, we did. So that went, went fantastic. And, and everybody, we did a concert series that, you know, that, that people came out and we knew which bands everybody loved. We want to make sure that people could come and um, have a great time. So that ends and we we're, we're, it's ending, right? So beginning of October, we're looking at it and we said, can we pull this off in the winter? Because otherwise, you know, and at any point it was always like governor could shut us down for restrictions could get stricter. Restrictions could open up. Yeah. We, we don't know. We're we really know. at the mercy. So we said, can, what can we do? Can we, we're either going to have to shrink down and hold on to, to what we have, or we're going to go all in two feet, build this thing out and create an entire winter village. And oh, Josh God. and I, yeah, you know, we're going all, we're going to go one way or the other, but we're going strong in either direction. You know, it's just kind of, but I went back to, and, and this is, where I keep going back to like, trust my gut. My gut says people need this and that this is like psychologically, this is what people need. And it's kind of that whole, if you build it, they will come. They kept coming back to me. So it, I didn't even you know, when you're dreaming and you're visioning these sorts of things, like you can't get into the weeds of like, how is, can this be possible? How is this going to happen? It's more like you got to stick the big dream up there and just attack it. And so we threw everything up on this dry erase board. I remember like end of September, early October, it was just like ice skating rinks, you know, like food trucks, you know, all everything up there, like a whole new stage, a whole new outdoor layout, more seating, a vendor, like, and we put it all up there and we just said, let's attack it. Like, let's just see if everything and anything is possible to go after this. And then Josh and I had this incredible experience when we were early in our marriage to live in Europe. So we just had that in our mind constantly. They used to do these Christmas like Advent markets. And that was just an experience is just like no other, you know, and we said, can we recreate that? We were going for the European French theme. Let's do that. Let's go all in. So we pulling out pictures and um, getting connected with everybody that we can. And I just kept putting my foot down so many times. Be like, I don't know about the ice rink. I'm like, the ice rink is going to happen. <laughs> ice rink <laughs> is going to happen. I don't know how, but it's going to happen. And, um, and little by little, we saw as things, pieces were coming together. And this was, you know, we really had the deadline of like, like Black Friday, Black Friday, we wanted to have open the doors and have, we called it our Vintner Wonderland, open it up and just see how this, we bought so many fire pits, new furniture, all the stuff. We got to keep people warm. Um, and uh, so we went all in and that like the weekend before that, right before that Black Friday weekend, right around well, Thanksgiving ish, you had, I mean, there was like, hordes of people just landscaping, re-landscaping. We're just watching like huts being built and being put into places. It was like something out of a movie that, you know, the ice machine is like, they're spraying the hose down, getting the ice and cream. I'm like, I can't, this is coming. This is happening. I can't believe this is all <laughs> happening. And I had to let go because there was at that point, it was like, okay, I wanted it all done by Black Friday. Right. But it, it was, it was like, okay, it's, we're not all there. We're going to get like, we're going to be about 70, 75% there. And even that I had to like, let go and just say, okay, we can, we still have time. It's not like, we still have all of Christmas season, all of the to go through. So, so, and then many guests kept telling us like, we love, keep coming back here. It's everything keeps changing. It keeps getting better. So finally by like, you know, but the break between Christmas and January, we had everything totally hundred percent in place. And we said to ourselves, we're going to invest in this. It's a good chunk of change. It might be crazy. It might be crazy, but people need it. And so we went in, we did it. And we said, if we break even on all this, we're happy. We did it. You know, we did it. Well, to our, we, we made a, we made a ton of money. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> we went all in 
and we had profits and we were amazed on weekends. We would have 2000 people coming through this place, every bit of it full, every fire pit rented out in full. And, and I just confirmed that if you, if you follow your gut and you truly are, are, are in it for people and what they need, then your gut's going to lead you the right way. You know, I think you're, you're going to go the right direction. I was going to just ask you something on those lines, because how many times have you built an ice skating ring? Zero. <laughs> right. Right. Because when I saw it, I was like, do they have that experience with us? <laughs> because when you think about that, right, where do you freaking start? That's <laughs> Google. That's where I would start. How to, not that I intended to build uh, watching YouTube, but here's why I'm asking this to you. No matter for the ladies that are listening, no mm -hmm. matter what you do, you might say, oh my gosh, that sounds daunting. I've never done uh, new construction or I've never done a uh, triplex 10 unit or I've never done the house. Mm -hmm. This full gut, the shell looks Horrible, right? But right. it's the same concept that Melanie is telling. She had the vision mm -hmm. and is this what people need, right? Mm -hmm. How did you pass, if you had any, any fear, any like doubt? It's not like cheap investment, right? Exactly. You're putting yourself mm -hmm. in the line right there. Mm -hmm. How did the mindset I'm curious on that because that can be applicable with so many different mm -hmm. scenarios. How did you pass that and move forward with confidence? That's a great question. So I think there's a few times in my life and there's, there's these certain things. I think we all know, and I keep saying your gut, but it's, it's conviction. When you feel something is so right and you know that you're not sure how to get there, but you know that it's right. You almost have to jot it down, put it on a piece of paper and remind yourself of that because there's going to be, like you said, the fear is going to enter in, doubt will enter in. These things are going to enter in the obstacles. You know, it wasn't like, and um, to be honest with you, the ice rink is the first weekend didn't work because generator and this and that, and we had to replace it and all this stuff. So the doubt is going to creep in. The fear will creep in, but you always have to keep going back to, I was convicted. I'm totally convicted on this, you know, and, and no matter what happens, if, if we have to veer right and left and we get to maybe a little, a different finish line than I, than I thought we were going to be at, um, I'm still going to go and we're going to get to a place that's going to only improve upon my original conviction. Um, so that's what I would say is that if, if, when you are totally convicted, don't ever lose sight of it because things are going to come into play that are, that are going to want you to derail, but if you know, it's right, just keep following it. And even if it doesn't turn out perfect, there's going to be an ending there that wouldn't have been if you didn't start, you know, that then, so that's kind of what happened to us with this whole, with this whole Vintner Wonderland is, you know, when we bought the property, I already had, I had a dream of doing this sort of concept. I did not think it was going to happen this fast and furious. You know, we built this 70 foot barrel tower. And I, I remember taking a picture of that. I, I saw it somewhere. This is in 2018. And I was like, wouldn't that be cool to do someday? And here I am watching the ice rink and a barrel tower go up at the same time. And I'm like, I can't believe it's all happening. It's all happening. <laughs> But I tell you what, like, I can't even tell you how many pictures of people took in front of that barrel tower. I mean, that was like probably one of the most Instagrammable places on property. And, um, and all of this, this crazy thing that we did jumping all in and the, and the excitement and the success of it has now changed our business plan going forward right. because all Absolutely. of our other properties, we said, we will always write into the, the a festival. We're always going to have a festival ground because it's so great for the local community. It's obviously so great for our guests. It's, it's outside. It's some, it's COVID or whatever's next, hopefully nothing, obviously, but it's got a lot of open air concepts there. Um, so now this is when we look at properties, we're like, okay, well, where's the festival ground? I mean, it may not be able to be as big as Renault, 
but it's that it it can be worked in and it's it's you know it changes the business plan because it's of the success right so it's it's just kind of like the benefits right of Mm -hmm. of something horrible uh, as COVID, but you were able to test the ground in different in different things and keep things that really, really worked and, and really say, wow, if that didn't have happened, right? That yep. didn't happen. We wouldn't have done this whatsoever. Right. So, you know, there, there are blessings that come with, you know, some hurdles. And I love what you said, Melanie, because I'm, when I, when I hear people that, you know, the women we interview are just, I just always learn something, you know, from each of them. And as you were talking, it was very distinct what you said. You said, we said, what's the possibility here? You know, so, so then the possibility was this outdoor, it was like the first pivot, right? Mm-hmm. And, then, then, and then that was, then you had some momentum around that. And then the next part was like, now we're entering the winter, right? And for those who aren't in the Northeast, yeah. winters can be pretty, pretty tough. Mm-hmm. That's just tough in a good year, non-COVID year, let alone sure. all the restrictions inside, right? Mm-hmm. So you talk about obstacles, right? I mean, that's just, I don't know, that's just a huge obstacle. So mm-hmm. then for you all to say, you didn't retreat, because you could have, mm-hmm. but you said, what can we do to continue this? Um, you know, it's just, it's very inspiring. And I think the, the idea of possibilities, I see you said, we either can go this way or we can go this way. You know, so, so ladies listening, I, I know we like all have to, we like our pros and con lists. So I don't know about you. Mm-hmm. Chets and I have decisions we're making, right? I'm just, yes. and, and, and there's yeah. a lot of pros and cons. Like you can, and I'm a great person where I can literally talk about something for five hours and I can talk about it both ends. Sure. But at some point, like you got, you vote, you, you know, Melanie, you, you kind of put a stake in the ground. We're doing this. Exactly. Let's make it, there's no like, let's do it. And now let's not really do it. And let's, let's, let's just have a one picnic table. Like folks, we were there, me and Andressa went there. We go there for our retreats with our business partner and and we went ice skating. No, that was a weekend. We just had some fun. We we're like, we're going yeah. down and having it. Can I tell you, February in the Northeast this, this past year, <laughs> you know, most people were not having any fun outside, especially in the Northeast because of everything going on. It was like, it was like such a beautiful thing to see safely people, you know, in their little grooves mm-hmm. wearing masks. Like I, I didn't feel, you know, it's just wonderful. And my point in saying this, ladies, take that from what Melanie said is like, where can you stay more in possibility Mm-hmm. with your own business because you know you're able to thrive with a resort during covid in the northeast in the winter time you not only stayed afloat you grew significantly exactly so it's not like oh melanie is the smartest person in the world I mean, you are brilliant but you got you your way of being great at that you you know that and i know that and Justin knows that and i want the woman listening it's not about the outside because you would have had, you had every reason not to succeed. <laughs> exactly. And, and quite honestly, it would have made sense, right? Like it would have made perfect you, sense if we had just, if we had held tight, held the money tight, yeah. let, let some people furlough, um, you know, whatever we had to do. But that was the other thing. We were convicted that we didn't want to lose our team. You know, we wanted to actually, and believe it or not, we had to hire a whole bunch more people to make this work. But Again, that's giving people jobs during COVID. You know, who's hiring? Who's hiring for resorts during COVID? We were the only ones that I know, you know, that we needed to. And and the spirit, the uplifting spirit that that brought to the team that we're, you know, bringing on more people. And I tell you what, it is energizing. Just like you said, when, you, when you're sitting there and you see people again, we actually had a family and and. I wish we had a videotape them because there's, there was a family that, um, you know, they had an older, older grandparents that hadn't seen their family in six months. And they came to the property and they had this sort of family, this safe family reunion outside around a fire pit. And they were just in tears. They were like, you thank God you provided something. We haven't been able to see each other and we're able to be here. Um, but you're right. I think you, we had, you have to make a decision, you know, analysis paralysis is, is one that, um, that can, that can, paralyze you. And then you, it's a missed opportunity. So going in, not being afraid, like you said, putting the stake in the ground just say, okay, well this we've decided it. There's no going back. And whatever the outcome is, we've all have shared ownership in that outcome. Um, we, we're going to die saying we tried, you know, we're, we're going to die saying yeah. we tried. And, um, but 
you'll never know the positive benefits of what these things can do if you if you're afraid to take that step. Awesome. So Melanie, moving forward, right with acquisition, did COVID contribute to for you guys to find better opportunities? Uh, what's going on in the hospitality section of yes. real estate? Yes. So again, feeling really confident that we survived and thrived during COVID, we just said oh, we feel we feel super confident about our business model. You know, like I said, we base it off weddings first because that is the first thing to put numbers around, make metrics work, um, and we're very good at that part. And then we can build out all the other streams of revenue after that because in COVID, um, well, let's just back up. We're very much like the the Burr strategy of resorts. That's kind of our, that's our whole philosophy. You know, we buy, we were rehabbing something. We raised the revenue that's increasing all those different revenue streams, refinance, repeat. That's the whole, that's the same sort of strategy for resorts. Typically, most hotel, hotel owners are going to just buy and run it. Two R's, one R, I should say, buy and run it, right? They're, the other the other parts are not really in their scope. And so we feel super confident going in that this is, so Josh, my husband always likes to say, he likes to quote Warren Buffett, you know, like um, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. So right now, the people that are, run resorts as sort of just a buy and run and hold sort of thing are obviously not seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. This is probably not the best time. But we feel as so though this is exactly the, the perfect time. So we always had the goal of buying 100 resorts in the next 15 years. Now that's on super drive because basically, right, things are things are on sale. And and people that don't, when we go in, we're just looking with whole different eyes where we know exactly what works. We know that if we can get the weddings to work and these other things to work and get the festival going and get all these different revenue streams coming, we can make the property work. And we have the team to do it. And it's all about the team. I, I'll stress that a hundred times over. It's all about the team to do that. So we're building at Renault, we're building this core team that is that can then branch out and, and then run to the other resorts and start helping build the teams there. Mm -hmm. And everyone's really, we talk about it every week. Everyone's really excited to be part of that core team. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that is, that is again, COVID has changed, changed our business plan into, to just growing right now. We're just assets, assets, assets. And, um, and, we feel really confident that this is the exactly the most perfect time for us to jump in and do this. You mentioned about Burr, right? So before, because I kind of I know the numbers, but I wanted you to share the numbers because I want you to brag. Oh gosh, <laughs> Reno, Reno, <laughs> you bought that resort for five? Was it five? Right? Five million. Now we're more and more we're learning how much of a deal that was. That was right, that was and a, that was. 18, 2018. 2018. That's a, that's an 18 hole golf course of 240 acres, 120,000 square feet of real estate. Yeah. 5 million. And we are 2021. What is the projection for this year? 20, 20 million. $20 million. million. So that's yeah. a good bird. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good bird, huh? <laughs> well, 600 weddings helps with that. Right. So I think, uh, you know, that it increased, Dramatically, those are contracts. Those are signed contracts. So that's that, and that's another thing, right? During COVID, we're getting monies in now, right, for future contracts, right? Because they have to put the deposit. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm. They get they get like three times they're depositing. So yes, we were getting money in um, for a future event. I love that though because it's so applicable to any niche, mm -hmm. right? It's, it, you know, you literally took like a you bought a bank owned resort from, mm -hmm. you know, for 5 million. So it doesn't have to be 5 million. It could be 50,000. 50, <laughs> it's not about the numbers, sure. uh, but, but it's, it's about the, 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 the value of knowing that, that you can add value yeah. in a niche that most people, like you said, are just, the operators are literally just buy it and operate. And that was a great mm -hmm. analogy. So mm -hmm. ladies listening, where are there other opportunities? Mm -hmm. You know, there are opportunities everywhere. We just don't always see them. And I think that's the other piece that, uh, you know, where are most people running from? That might be the right opportunity, mm -hmm. you know, right now for you, you know, listening. And I just, we can't stress that enough. And I, I need to even do that in my own life, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and 
You're no, saying- I was going to say, I would say just yesterday we were talking with somebody where we're kind of implementing a sort of EOS system in our, in our, and he sent us something that I thought was really great. He said, um, you know, he, uh, just uh, capitalizing on everything that's possible, even your services. So naming everything, right? Just naming everything. He brought up uh, this little quick example of how, you know, there was a, a company that distributes or that uh, brings laundry to the hospitals and, and one company, most companies dropped it off in a big crate right on the you know garage door and said, there it is. It's all clean, ready to go. And this other company was bringing in and stocking the shelves and they didn't, you know, they didn't even think anything. They didn't realize they were doing something extra special and said, let's name that. Let's name that process, you know, because now you have something extra additive that kind of eliminates buyer's remorse for that matter, you know? So I just, to your viewers, just like there's probably even processes that they're doing that can be additive and, you know, explained. And now you're, you're, you're increasing your opportunity to be different, better. Yeah. And I love your concept of building the team. It really gave mm-hmm. me a good idea about, you know, you have this core team there and now you're buying all this other, are the resorts, right? A hundred, you said a hundred resorts in how many years? 15 years. 15 years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, talk about needing the right people in the right seat Mm -hmm. instead of you and Josh, right. Being the, the, the only ones to go out there and and to do that. Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, how can we build something here? And then they're almost like SWAT team, if you will. Right. They go in and, and, you know, make it happen. I'm like, that's a, it's a great way to think of building regional teams, but anyway. I'm not making about me, but I, you know, I always like, oh, I just wrote an idea down on my piece of paper. But anyway, no, and um, I think there needs to be in in building that team. I think in every team, I'm learning this more and more. Where Ash and I are, are really into this vivid vision book in terms of somebody's got to have the. Are we, oh yeah, are we, you guys talking about, <laughs> love that, love that book. So we we've been listening to it twice, I think, so far. But we, um, uh, don't you believe? Don't you agree that there has to be the visionary who is just kind of the got the the audacious goal out there. And then operations will catch up. But as long as everybody's synced up, I think that anything's possible. And then that's what we always say. We, we When we hire people, we're like, we're scrappy. We, are you ready to be scrappy? And that and by that, it means roll your arms up and get ready for this ride that we don't. Ex- we have ideas, but I think it's going to be even bigger than we're expecting because we're ready to just go, you know, go to the moon on this one. And um, and so we always say, if you're scrappy and you love the vision, you know, you're going to love it on this team. <laughs> I love it. And, and for, for the ladies listening and for everyone listening, we're actually going to have a um, really special exclusive webinar uh, on April 13th. So we just want to personally invite you and we're going to be featuring Melanie. We're going to be talking about resort investing. We're going to be giving just, you're going to give some great value around that as a niche uh, and things to look for, even if you did on a smaller level, if it's probably be very applicable to like the vacation rental world because it's hospitality, it's service, right? So anyway, we're going to talk about resort investing as a niche. We're also going to talk about all your upcoming projects because uh, you're you're looking to grow your you know your business with with others, which is just an amazing concept, and and we're just so happy to be part of it with you. So um so yeah, come come to to uh, go to our website, therealestateinvestor.com, and there'll be an events page. And you can just register for there. It'll be a free webinar. Uh, promise you'll get some value from it. And you'll learn about some of the great things that Melanie and Josh are up to in terms of their growth and uh, how you potentially can, you know, go along go along this amazing ride with them. <laughs> so so I'm enjoying. It's fun. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I'm excited where you guys are going to buy stuff. I'm like, oh, we can go visit that, you know? Please um, do. That's, that's the fun what part. I'm thinking. Like, where are you buying? Near yeah. the beach? So we Eventually. can do all our retreats there too. <laughs> yes. Well, that's just the thing. We, you know, when you're an owner of a resort, it's your resort. Come on down, come to it, enjoy it. So it's, it's a passive income with a lot of perks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll get into that during uh, April 13th. So join us. We'll have a lot Absolutely. of fun. It'll be a, it'll be a great, a great evening. Uh, we're going to do that at seven o'clock in, in the evening, Eastern standard time. So come join Can't us. Wait. But um Melanie, uh, without further ado, please share with, the, with our listeners where they can learn more about you and just see all the amazing things that you guys are doing. Please come check us out at Accountable Equity, accountableequity.com. That is our um, investor um, community where we like to learn, to grow together. Um, we, you guys are we're our honored faculty partners on that. And we would love uh, anybody to come check us out and find out more about us. Awesome. And Listen, all this information, you guys don't need to rush to get pencil and paper. It's going to be on our show notes. 
So you guys can go there and get all the links to get in touch. Uh, now we're going to transition to our fabulous three questions. And the first one, Melanie, is what's the most transformational book mm. have you ever read? Mm. So I, I said the Dale Carnegie book last time. Mm -hmm. So, of course, that's still up there, but I can't get this vivid vision out of my head right now. So the, the, Cameron Harold's vivid vision is right now really transformative for us in terms of getting our vision out there for, for the whole team and the expanding team. So that one's a big one for me right now. Awesome. <laughs> the second question is, what's the most transformational routine that you do to create a financially free and balanced life? So we're also really into, Josh and I are really into, you know, we go up and down with it, but the morning miracle really is um, super important. And we do it as a couple and it's, it's our time to talk. <laughs> and um, that is extremely transformational. And the last question, which woman famous or not has inspired the most? Of course, I had to say my mom, um, but um, the, you know, she had 10 kids too. So I really look, call her up all the time. <laughs> Um, but there's also this four foot woman that I quote all the time. She said my famous quote, she says, do small things with great love, which is the foundation of our whole hospitality industry. And that's little mother Teresa. She transformed the world by um, doing small things with great love and, and serving the poorest of the poor. So we, we quote her all the time. So she's, she's a big one. Mm. One of my favorites. So mm -hmm. Melanie, thank you so much for being on with us. We've uh, got a lot more in store uh, to do together. We just, we really uh, appreciate you, what you guys are doing and all the good stuff. So thanks for being on. Thanks for show, sharing your wisdom because whether you're running resorts or you're running up one single family property, there were some amazing takeaways today. So thanks for being on our show. Thank you so much for having me. You guys are so much fun. Uh, let's do this a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. If you enjoyed this podcast and want to receive updates on our next interviews, go to our website, therealestateinvestor.com. There, you can subscribe to our show, become part of our investor community, and get updates on upcoming episodes. If you like our show, please share it with other women who would benefit. And don't forget to leave us a rating on iTunes. We'd really appreciate it. And as always, we encourage you to take one action as a result of today's show and put it into motion. So you can live both a financially free and balanced life. Thanks for spending time with us. Ciao.